So, okay, so I'm going to share these two dreams that I had. They're completely, on one hand, very different, but you'll also see the the sim, what the similarities is, which is interesting that the dreams in themselves are very different. So, in the first dream, I find myself on a sofa sitting next to, to a man. Uh, I'm probably not there in physicality in that in that dream. I'm probably there uh, on a different, energetically on a different dimension. I'm present there, but energetically I'm very present there, very present there. And um, but they don't see me in in the dream. The people that are there, they don't perceive me in a physical body. So I'm sitting on this couch next to this man. And he's the older brother of a younger brother. And the younger brother is standing in front of him, maybe two, two and a half meters away, pointing a gun at him. And there's a, at the brother, the older brother next to me. And there's a man next to the younger brother who I don't, I'm not focused on him at all, but he's, um, he has a different agenda that is not personal to the brothers. He has just, yeah, he's like, he plays the role like of, of this is just what's coming after, not in the dream, this, of like worm tongue in, in uh, Lord of the Rings. So he is influencing the younger brother. He wants, the, his agenda is to get the younger brother to pull the trigger. And the younger brother, he has gone, you know, he's in a place in his mind where he's gone postal, you know, like he's lost it. And he's pointing the gun with two hands at his brother and he's like he's like just um, out of himself with rage and yeah and so he's he's shaking and he's very very close to pulling the trigger he's very dramatic and the older brother is is so panic is so afraid and is saying please don't do it don't do it don't do it so I'm sitting there in this scene and I have a clear preference that the younger brother won't pull the trigger. I have that clear, clear preference. That's who I am. That's my natural feeling, desire is that he's not going to pull, he will not pull the trigger. At the same time, I am not one bit uh, worried. At the same time, I have no idea what the outcome is. I have a preference that he will not pull the trigger, but it's not my my um, peace, my, my, my equilibrium, my inner peace is just who I am uh, in the dream. And it's not coming from a belief that I don't believe he's going to pull the trigger. No. I have no idea. He might pull the trigger. He might not. And um, all I can, what I begin to feel, because I, I begin immediately, I'm focusing only because that's the others, I have no focus on them. I'm focusing only on the younger brother with the gun. I don't have any thoughts in my mind. I don't think, don't do it. That's what the older brother is saying. and He's in fear. And all, all I'm experiencing is I'm focused on this young man. And I wish, you know, it's like I desire he doesn't pull the trigger and I have zero attachment to the outcome so if he does he does if he doesn't he doesn't and I'm just feeling I feel love for him and I don't know him but the knowing of his soul opens up to me and then it's like I know him but it's not like I know his story or I know him personally and I feel the love and the love for him just starts to grow and grow and grow. And with my love, 
that I feel for him. And again, it's not even in a, doesn't go in a direction like this. Like I love him. Um, not personal at all. It's just the love that is there that is just opening and opening and I feel it. And yes, it is for that being, but it's more for his soul, I guess. But also, of course, the, the physicality is a part of it. And that love comes, it's just, it just opens up more and more. And it's, that is a very tangible power field. I don't use the word force because force is, is for me, is the reverse of power. Um, that's force. Force is, has to force because it has no power because it is powerless. That's why it has to force. That's how I use those words and I understand them. Um, so a power field, like my aura, um, starts to grow very, very tangible. Coming from my heart, you know, it's the heart field. Very, very tangible. And, I, and, and it's just happening. I can't even help it. It's happening because I'm, I am, um, and then, and then it'll be, yeah, and then that will be very nicely explained with the words that uh, Matt Kahn used. Um, the moment that this power field, this energetic love field, touches upon the younger brother holding the gun, he, he's, it starts to crumble. His, 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 like the, 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 um, that 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 force within him that was building up also being supported by that other guy that was like talking in his ear um the moment it touched upon him it started to disintegrate it starts to disintegrate because it's not real and what is not real about it is it's not who he is his soul doesn't want to you know, is not feeling what he's feeling. Uh, his, his soul is, is not at all angry. You know, does, would never pull that trigger. And that, and, and, and love is the truth. Love, that vibration is, is, is the truth. It is the true vibration of our being. So as that was touching him, the force that was running through him, that was coming through, uh, that was coming through the egoic mind, which is, which is, um, yes, coming through, through the egoic mind. Okay. I explain the egoic mind so often, I'm, I don't want to do that here. And through the emotions that are um, the match to the egoic mind. So through this anger and fear and rage and whatever was going on in him, um, those emotions in the presence of, in a field of unconditional love, they literally cannot hold up. They cannot hold their frequency. So then, um, shortly before, this is all happening within moments. Shortly before there was a bus, all of a sudden I, I realized that there's a bus standing next to us. And there, there's a group of, of uh, like teenagers in the bus. And the moment that he realizes he's not going to be able to shoot his brother, he moves around and points the gun to the bus. And he was going to then uh, um, at least, you know, take out some of the kids on the bus. And, and that was just a moment because then, you know, all... Again, in me, there was not, no change. The only thing that was happening within me was that my love was growing. The more that, you know, I was just focused on him and I felt him and I felt his soul. And I, I just loved him and loved him, loved him more, loved him more. This wasn't something that, that was a practice. This wasn't something I chose to do or I had no thoughts in my mind. This was just happening. And... And then he, you know, dropped, dropped the gun and there was just no way. Uh, yeah. And, and then I woke up so I could remember. 
and I realized because I had now I had this I mean I knew this before you can hear this and have it mentally but now I had it in my in my body as an experience that love is the most powerful the most powerful power is the only power it is the only power and this is how um, with our vibration we change the world even something that is happening you know somewhere very far away at a distance because distance doesn't matter when we are focused on something we are there and our vibration is there our vibration flows into the field that we are focused on so now I'm telling you the second dream because yeah okay I'm telling you the second dream the second dream was Again, this is just a very small, very small snippet of this dream. Mm. I'm in the water. There's a, a lake or something, and there there's a platform out of wood that's floating on the lake. And I don't re recall exactly because, and it also it doesn't matter. That's the thing. It doesn't matter. What matters is that imprint that was happening in, that was the message that was the um, the recognition of, of truth so um, Trump, Trump was was on the platform and two other guys I don't know security guys or something and they jumped into the water they could swim and Trump just just uh, dove or he actually didn't did he dive? I don't know. I don't remember. He jumped he jumped into the lake and immediately and I just thought like, oh no, why did he do that? <laughs> but again, I, I wasn't I, I was um the the um the consciousness I was in in that dream was the same type of consciousness like the one I just told you. So, um, and he immediately started to sink. He didn't do anything. He didn't start to swim. He didn't struggle, nothing. But so, and I saw him sinking down. Again, this is all happening within, within moments. Sinking down right in front of me. And he had his arms, however, he had his arms up. And he was totally calm. But he, w he didn't want to die. He was hoping someone would rescue him. And um, at the same time, um, he was gonna he was gonna drown. And, and this was all happening so fast. And now I have to take like something that was within a split of a split of a split of a second, that still I had the space within me to be aware of all of it. And that's that's. Um, that's like the, the, you know, like the, the expansion of time that is possible. How we can with, uh, dive into with our consciousness into a iota split of a second. And, and we can scan, we, we, we perceive everything that is happening. Every thought, every realization, every knowing that is showing up in our consciousness um, about us and about others, what they're thinking about the situation, we can, it's like we 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 can re, we become aware of that. And so I knew I needed to. If I wasn't going to, I mean, I wanted to. I instantly, of course, I wanted to rescue him. But he was sinking very fast, and the lake was dark and fat and sinking so fast. And uh, it, you know, 
if I just reached down, you know, I had, I had to dive immediately, but I had to take a breath first, of course. And these are the things. So, so the, the very first fraction of a second, I went into panic because if I wouldn't rescue him, he would die. I didn't want him to die. He, he was very, um, yeah. And the dream was, was like, um, I, I, again, I was, had this strong desire, the clear desire that he, that he stays alive and that he, he will be rescued, that I would rescue him or whoever, you know, I was the only one there who could, that's why. And, um, uh, at the same time again, so the first fraction of a second was, was like, Oh my God, I have to dive immediately. I don't know if I can do it. You know, he's sinking so fast. I don't know if I, if I can, uh, reach him down enough. And I was already for a split second seeing him, um, sinking faster than I could get to him. And, and that was like such that, that was a shock th that if I, if I couldn't rescue him, that would be a, sh a shock again, a split second that came in, but into my field and I let that go. I could let that go. And, and, um, what was stronger was the energy of, and this is what I want to talk about also. And, and what Matt Khan said, this is all going to weave together really nicely um, for empowerment. Um, let's wait, wait. Okay. I knew I could not afford to go into that mindset of panic. Then I would lose him. Then he would die. So... And, and it wasn't even that I chose, it was like the truth of me was stronger and came back and said, oh, uh, and this is again, this is happening within split seconds, like, um, I'm not attached. I'm totally calm. And there wasn't even a thought of I'm not attached to him dying. I'm not, there wasn't even that thought of I'm not attached. Okay. So what was it then? What was it that could instantly, um, dissolve that iota fraction of a second of a moment where that panic kicked in. It was, it was remembering. Yeah, it was literally the remembering of being. And in that remembering of being, see this is not a remembering of the mind this is a this is like the owning of who you are the owning and in the owning there is no fear there is no attachment because you're owning yourself your true self that is a uh, that is connected you know because the soul can feel that oneness with all life and so it is one with the experience, with the surroundings, not one, how should I say that that is not me. It's just, there is no separation. And so there is no fear. And there is that sense of this is a dream. And with that, there is also the knowing that the dream When there is no, and, and this is, this is not something, this is what, what I'm saying now, what, what I know afterwards, what I can put into words. This is not something that is, that is in my mind. Um, but it is a knowing in the, in the field. It is a knowing in myself that as that that the dream is a reflection of how i feel how i am of my vibration so that if i am not afraid and if i'm attached i am afraid if we are attached then then there there is a fear because there's a fear of a different outcome we're attached to a certain outcome I'll get to that later. 
so it, it is the knowing and that's just there oh, this is a dream and and when there is no fear of losing him I won't lose him I, I didn't have these thoughts I just remembered and the fear that split second dissolved and I just I just reached down and I could get him you know I grabbed his hands pulled him up and uh, you know and just laid him on top of the um, on top of the uh, no of that platform there yes and, and okay and there was one exchange what did I say I said um, Oh, good thing I was able to catch you or something like that, you know? And he's like, and, and I'm saying this as I'm lifting him onto the platform, and he says, are you sure? Now, when he said that, are you sure, it was half of him, like, a, a, a part of him was really questioning whether I was happy that I had saved him, and um, the other part was just, it was just joking. It was just joking with me. Like, it, it was like a, a prodding, like, are you sure? You know, you sure you like me that much that you want to save me, you know? <laughs> are you sure about me? You know, yeah, that's what it was. Are you sure about me? And then I said, and, and then I said, oh, I'll give you a, uh, you know, I, I'll give you a reason to uh, ask, Oh, how did I say it? Um, I'll give you, I'll give you a reason. Uh, are you sure? In, in a second, you know, which meant like, which meant uh, kind of, you know, the, in in a joking way. How dare you ask? Am I sure? How dare you question my love for you? Or, or uh, my um, desire that, that you stay alive, or, or my, uh, how I, f it's, it's not personal, you know, yeah, how dare you question that, and it was only jokingly, you know, so I said, oh, I'll give you a reason to ask why, uh, are, are you sure in a second, you know, and then, and I instantly, and then he, I laid, he was lying down and I instantly said, I'm just joking. And then I caressed his, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just joking. And, and I caressed his, um, his face. So much love there. So much love. And, and then I woke up. Uh, so why I'm saying this is, How can we have, how can, th that seems to be a paradox. How can there be a clear preference, a clear desire to have the young man not pull the trigger, to have Trump not drown? Or you can just say this man not drown, you know, just it, it just happened to be Trump. Um, yeah, it could have been anyone, yeah. Exactly. Um, and at the same time, not be attached. Because that the human cannot do. The human that is still, I say the human, which is the part of us that is, that is still operating through the egoic mind. That, that seems to be a paradox. But on the level of the soul, uh, in a higher frequent, frequential existence of our being, which we, that is a consciousness, level of consciousness that we can absolutely, we are embodying that now, that is coming through. Um, yeah. We're getting ready for that. We are embodying that. It is not. It is not a, a paradox, because it is not being attached to the outcome. Is 
is this total trust in, in whatever arises, arises. And we are completely open to that because there is no fear within us, because there is no separation, sense of separation within us. And that doesn't mean that I'm not, as a, in a physical body, um, unique and, 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 uh, and uh, unique onto myself, physically separate being to everybody else. Physically, on the physical level, yes, absolutely. But on the consciousness level, that is, um, uh, as soon as I'm embodying my soul as soon as i have transcended or or, or um, there where i have transcended the egoic mind and no longer operate through the egoic mind in those moments or those frac fractions of me because it can also be that there are still yes of course when we're not 100 percent liberated yet then there are still fractions that are um, identified in the egoic mind. They might not be activated in the, at the same moment, but it still makes up our entire symphony of vibration. So uh, that is only a paradox to the egoic mind, not to the consciousness of the soul because the oh, so beautiful mother mary because the consciousness of the soul it doesn't have is not attached to the outcome of the dream because it completely trusts what arises and there is no fear and when we operate from that state of consciousness then the dream morphs and what happens in the dream is 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 also nothing nothing to fear so and and also the preference that we have which is of course coming from truth coming from love what would love do that is that is the inspiration of the divine working through us that is the open awake, aware soul, the aligned soul. So, Matt Kahn says, ah, yes, beautiful, okay. How do I do as an act from the no thingness within me and then I put in, in brackets from the zero point and the zero point and the no thingness to me is is a portal it is a portal um, For the divine stream of consciousness and the and the soul to be able to come through to to be able to stream through all the way through the mind all the way into awareness and into a embodied awareness and that is pure consciousness and pure consciousness is not itself has doesn't have a form but it it works through all forms so how can i do how can i act when i am in that state of emptiness and he he says we act without agenda or attachment to outcome we let doing come from a space of inspiration. We act without agenda 
or attachment to outcome. And then doing comes from a space of inspiration. So that then means that the doing is completely inspired. It is completely coming through us. It is the divine. It is love. It is the, the perfect coherence, heart coherence. Coherence means um, this is the perfect, this, this is how, when there is no distortion, how the dream uh, shows itself, how the dream shows up, how the dream when I say the dream is all our surroundings, all our our whole situation, how it morphs, how it shows up, and what happens through ourselves and and through everybody else. And that means that our natural preference is expressed, shows up. Because fearlessness, fearlessness which I would describe as, which I would call peace, total peace, total safety, feeling of safety and peace, and especially the feeling of not being attached to the outcome. So you're completely, you're even more relaxed than when you're watching a movie full of uh, tension, even though it's just a movie. Uh, but, you know, that's how the soul experiences, um, yeah. And so when we are embodied, when we can embody it's not like we do that. It's what's happening um, when we're ready. And we can become aware of that. And why it is so helpful to become aware of that, and this is also why I make these videos, is so that um, we don't suffer unnecessarily thinking that what is in actuality an awakening to the soul of the soul because the ego doesn't awaken <laughs> it, it just um, it is a program that when we notice it we notice what is the ego within us within our um, perception within yeah our perception and when we notice it then it has no power it never had then it has no force and its force field becomes it dissolves and then we can operate from our truth the truth of our being which is absolutely unique, full of, full of diverse flavors. You know, we still have our person. Actually, our personality can come through, uh, really shine through in all of its facets, shapes and forms and colors. Because the personality that is shaped through the egoic structure is an illusory personality. It is your personality through the through the platform of, of fear-based and, and separation-based and, and then how the egoic mind is conditioned. And when that becomes transparent, seen through, recognized, loses its power, so it's, it's like a movie that's been playing that we were so involved in and we completely identified with a character in a movie. And and as we get this, as we start to understand, uh, okay, so what is life? What is, what, who are we? And, uh, yeah, how is my experience? How do I 
create or co-create my experience? How do I influence influence my experience? How does this work? What is this? You know. So when we start to realize um, the egoic mind, it would be like realizing in that movie um, that filter, a filter that realizing that the, the <laughs> that the main character is an actor. It's not real. And, um, and the pixels, as we realize it consciously, the programming of it, the conditioning of it, that it is a program and how that program, how thinking through that program, experiencing through that program, yeah, thinking through that program, believing that program, having that imprint completely um, um, defines our experience. And how when we understand that, how we were conditioned, you know, because if we understand how we were conditioned and this is why we experience this way, we can also uncondition ourselves. We know that it is like a prejudice that we have, that we were simply unconscious of. But once we realize, ah, it's a prejudice, it comes from there, or ah, it's a filter, it comes from there. Oh, I have that indent because I had that accident and now I see everything in green instead of in red. So, so then I realize, oh, everything on the screen that is, that is green is actually red and then it, there's a different, all of a sudden there's a completely different uh, um, impression. So then as we're watching that movie and as we are seeing uh, it become more and more transparent and, and you know, and then, then we start to see, oh, okay, uh-huh. Uh, um, then we start to see, let's say, for, for, from a movie that was totally real, totally real, we were totally engrossed in it and it was like, wow, so emotional, so dramatic and so forth. Then it becomes slowly, slowly, slowly ever more like a um, cheap theater play with cheap actors. So what I'm, what I'm saying when I'm using this is because when you see the the broom standing in the corner uh, that the um, that the cleaning lady left on the set that doesn't belong there you know or or you're watching a sci-fi movie <laughs> from like from the future and and then you see someone or is it different no like you're watching a movie from from the middle ages and you see someone in the back checking his phone checking his smartphone, you know, like an extra or something. Or you see someone wearing like a very modern watch or something like that. It instantly, it cuts to the spell, yeah? That's what I mean. It, when, you see, when you see the truth shining through because you understand, because you, you, you understand the conditioning and how your experience has been impressioned by the conditioning. Then it breaks the spell and breaking the spell of the egoic mind is breaking that force field. And, and where you break it, you don't feed it anymore with your soul essence, with that's your power. You don't empower that program anymore. You don't give that program its power anymore. And so the program, program becomes weaker and weaker, which is like when you're watching a movie, you know, the pixels, they start to fade out. They start to become see-through. You know, less and less and less saturation. And then what happens is there's like a whole other world in a, in a way. There's a different movie happening behind that. It would be like, let's say, oh, oh I'm not going to continue on this parallel no okay um, so the attachment to outcome right so the the um, dissolving of the attachment to outcome comes with the realization also that also the waking dream uh, the waking life is also the principles of a dream it's also, it's a waking dream. It is still a dream. And what does that mean, it's still a dream? Is there anything else but a dream? Uh, no. <laughs> no. 
It's always a form of a, a kind of a dream. But the difference between a lucid dream, where you are awake in the dream, and, and other dreams where you are only partially awake or where you are completely not awake, where you are completely not awake, you are at the, at the stake, mm, at the mercy, so to speak, of what is happening. You're like dragged through everything. You're dragged through and there's nothing really you can do. And, and then you act and you do things and they, and they uh, oftentimes in the dreams where, you know, when, when we are unconscious, it's like always we, we, never, we never act in ways or manage to be in the way that we would like to be. Uh, and it's, it's always coming through the egoic mind, through that program of separation. It's always um, unpleasant. There's always something there that's just not right. It's not, that doesn't flow coherently, you know. And for, it is first when, when we make peace. Okay. It is first when we begin to wake up. And that the making peace is the part that happens when they're um, making peace with the egoic mind also happens. Um, that, is be, that is the being open to all that shows up within yourself and within another and within the situation. So you have to be okay with everything that shows up in order, because that's what makes the space so that there is, so that that's, that's that portal that's at zero point is no attachment so that the divine can flow through and express inside and outside in a, a, the most aligned way that your conditioning in that moment allows. So that would be perfect coherence. And what, what is also, what is with coherence? It means that the waves, the energy waves that are weaving in your energy field, which is consciousness, every, every thought and even every part of your phys physicality is, is also an expression of your consciousness. Of course, not only on this level, not only uh, the consciousness of the ego, but also the consciousness of your soul, the consciousness of your... Um, over soul, the consciousness of your avatar, that's all streaming through, depending on how much of your power is asleep in the egoic mind, that's how much the egoic mind's um, thought waveforms, and that thought, that pa those pattern, that patterning and those frequencies will be expressed in the body, so that will also depend on how dense your body is and how coherent it is. Now we come back to the coherence. It has to do with the heart field, where that energy field that you are, where that weaves back through that zero point in your heart, because it's like there is that stream coming out through the heart into your field, uh, into your light field, and into your body, the energy into your body. And there is that stream going back through the heart to your greater energetic body and all your um, fractals that are that are that you are connected to. And the coherence is, by the way, when we feel love, that is heart coherence, you know. And when we feel love, true love, not not infatuation or that, no? But when we feel true love, what happens is that we forget everything around ourselves, what's happening around. It's almost like um, things quiet down, and it's just the two. It's just the, that, you know, the two of us, you know, the two uh, uh, lovers. And also, um, the mind quiets down 
and the senses are heightened. And, and there is such a sense of safety. When you are in that place of love, you feel that there's a real sense of safety because you are allowing mm, you are now truly feeling your soul and if it's if it's two people you know if it's that kind of love where I'm, I'm using this example now because it's it's where love is most palpable is when there is two two people that that really really love each other and they are um they are really expressing this, allowing this love to, to flow through. It's opening up to love, you know, and love is, a, is, is now really being felt. There is no friction, and that's exactly what it is. So the wave, the, the, the frequency waves in the heart coherent field, they do not um, cut each other. There's no friction there. There is no friction there, so there's nothing that bumps against something else. There is no adversity. No damage. No um, noise, as in noise. The sound is not dissonant, because dissonant sound would be like objects bumping into each other, and and, and you know spinning one in this direction, the other in the other, and then ah, like not like nails on on a chalkboard. No, it's the opposite. It's it harmonizes everything. Harmonizes everything, and literally, what happens when we are in this heart field, um, the vibration, our vibration rises so high that we are lifted into a higher dimension. I have experienced the lifting into a higher dimension also um once that this total heart coherence when it, when it wasn't at all in a moment of, of being in love or anything um it was just a moment i guess a moment of somehow peace and for a moment i saw that i was doing i was doing some breath work and yoga on a um, hill in, in a forest and it was close to sundown and for a moment, it was like the, um, the literally, the veils opened up to a to a higher existence, to a to a to a different version of to a different reality. The sound changed in my ears. It became like the background. There was no more background noise. It was quiet. All of a sudden. The light of the sun became golden. I saw moths or butterflies so softly flying through that golden light. I hardly dared to breathe. I was just like per perceiving it like, oh my God. Not, I wasn't even thinking that. I was just trying to stay as still as possible. To it just all opened up and the way it was was my body oh my energy field opened up and with that my whole surroundings not that they changed in 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 how the furniture was you know the furniture stayed you know everything stayed in the same place but the whole perception shifted of it um and it was heaven it was all of a sudden heaven it was like heaven this deep stillness, this deep peace. And, and then I even started to hear the Alphorns because I was in Switzerland, but I wasn't very far away from, from a big city. 
And I was like, oh my God, you know, that was like such a magical moment. The Alp horns, you know, that's what, what they play in the Alps, these long horns, and they were playing. And I couldn't imagine that that was happening in, uh, on, in the reality that I, that I came to the mountain in. And so this opened up for several seconds. And then it slowly, slowly, slowly closed again. But the Alphorns were still playing. So there was actually, there were some, there, there were some farmhouses there. So probably there was, maybe, maybe there was a group that was practicing or something, or, or there was, there were a couple people coming together at their neighbors. I don't know, but they were actually playing. So why I'm sharing this is, let's go um, again to Matt, what Matt Kahn says, is that um, acting from the space of no, no thingness, of the, that zero point, and that means we have no attachment and there's no agenda. And then pure inspiration can come through us and, and acts through us. It's not anymore the sense that you're doing it. Of course, you're enacting it, you're doing it, but it's not coming from uh, the mind or, or any kind of uh, conscious choice. It's, it's, it's just naturally what, you, like the, the, it's naturally then the highest version of yourself can express. And there's no way that we can say, yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> You know, that's, that is something that grows within us with our consciousness, with this awakening that is happening. And, okay, so here's the other part. It, because it can be misconstrued and then we, we again, we, we are not open to it and we suffer something that is actually showing us that we are awakening. So, what what will um at least my experience is that this is this can happen is that we may have to go through a period of time or through a process or through phases where uh when when we are not acting anymore through the egoic mind because we have we, we know that flavor we've gotten to know that and it's like that force that that conditioning that pushing that says okay now I know what I want to say <laughs> that says you should be doing this this or that or do this or do that and it it's not like when maybe you we remember okay so i'm just taking this example when when i was a child or when we were children because this is with every child all children that um we don't think about what we want to do that's something that comes that we learn that comes with the conditioning we just start we, we don't wake up in the morning and think okay what am i going to play today <laughs> or or we don't stand in, in front of our room and think okay what do I want to play what do I want to play no that's something that comes with the egoic mind taking over taking control and then is in the way of this natural flow of existence this natural inspirational flow that flows through us we we're we're one with that as as children still and as we are unlearning, as we are transcending the egoic mind, and we realize, um, okay, this is not, not anymore how I want to operate. I want to feel inspiration and just naturally, well, let's see where, where this now moment and the next now moment, let's see what wants to happen. Instead of always the ego right there, planning everything, you know, everything is under its control, you know, it, and it's it just, it's always like the director of the show, you know, and you, and, and when you realize that, and you, you notice that feeling, it's never going to be 
what we want to do is really get into that natural flow. We don't want to be coming from a place because the ego can be a kill joy to when, when it says, oh, um, do your art. And all of a sudden you, you don't feel like doing it. It's like, well, I don't know. I don't really feel like doing it. And because, because what the ego will do, it will make a task out of everything because it cannot inspire. It's impossible. So uh, that's why it will always tell you, oh, oh, do this, do this. And what happens is when it's coming from the ego and, and, and you're sensing the ego is pushing you to do, let's say, your, what you normally do when you're inspired or, or what you love to do most, right? Okay, so the ego is now telling you to do <laughs> what you love to do most. So even if you would love to do that in that moment, but you're not feeling it because because the ego is still so active and is still so much in the in the director's seat, um, but you already notice that. Okay, so what happens is, all of a sudden, you know, you, you realize, well, I don't want to do it because you don't want what you love to do to become a task. That's your. Time. That's your play. That's your beauty. That's what you enjoy. You don't want that to become a task because that's the killjoy right there. That's the sand in the machinery. And so there can be the, the phases where there's nothing going on because the e you're, you're, you're still so used to the ego being in control, but you, you already don't want to operate anymore from the ego. You can already tell you, you get it of, yeah, that's the ego taking over again. And that I, it's not a task. And so, and at the same time, you're not yet in the zero point. You're, you're, you're still attached to wanting to be inspired. You're still attached to wanting to be productive. You're attached to a certain outcome of this day, of what you're going to do, of yourself, of how you present yourself in the world, of how you show up. You're attached to that outcome, and that's why, you know, that's part of the ego. And that's why you can't be inspired. That's the block. That's the sand and machinery for that divine flow to come through. And because as you're attached, there is fear. You're coming from the ego, and that's you're not in that zero point. You're not in that open <sighs> portal. And to get into that open portal, as we understand this, there can be the phases. How's that attachment going to let go? Everything has to be okay. Everything has to be completely um, received and accepted as it shows up. Because if we have a judgment towards what shows up, how it shows up within ourselves or within our surroundings, we're, we're attached to a certain outcome. And we're still coming from the ego. So it may be that there are phases where there is absolutely nothing happening. No, no inspiration to do anything. No, no inspiration, no motivation to do anything. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. That, that can feel like, like a prison. That can feel like you're doing time in prison. And, and, and when that shows up, it, it, can, it can also feel like depression. It can also feel like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And that's why I guess I'm also talking about this. Because first it has to be 
totally accepted and totally fine regardless how you show up, regardless how you feel. Total surrender, total surrender, total surrender to what is. And then the recognition that when, um, when there is judgment towards yourself, when there is like, um, hey, you're still here, you're not doing your work, you're not doing your processes, oh my gosh, I'm thirsty, <laughs> oh my gosh. You're still in, in your rut, you know, you're still stuck, and, 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 and you're, you're still um, just distracting yourself, you're, you're like a vegetable, you're a couch potato, you're a vegetable, nothing going on with you, you're just throwing your life away. And thoughts, you know, thoughts that then come up about, about this emptiness, this field of emptiness within. This eternal emptiness that feels like, you know, I'm lost, I'm forgotten, I'm nobody. I'm just wasting my life away and um, always with the with the um, prep pre uh, prefaces at these words stand on the prefaces that I could be doing better I could be doing better and so I'm thinking well okay um, what do I need to do to get out of the rut you know and well I could push myself to do this all right um, oh, you should you should just push yourself to do this or just push yourself to do that, and then and then I feel like there's no way I can do this. There's nothing in me that wants to do this now. There is nothing in me right now. So so yeah. So you see, we see that feeling really bad about that situation when, when that shows up, this nothingness. It's no, no inspiration, no motivation. But when we feel bad about ourselves, there, there's the pre prefaces that we could be doing better and we should be pushing ourselves to do things that there's no way, and we realize there's no way we can do them, it, it would be like, okay, cut yourself in the finger. Why would I do that? That hurts. You know, a little bit drastic, but there are certain things we would never do. And it's different when, for example, when the body aches and the body really is strong and says, Please take me for a walk. Please move. Because I'm feeling... So when that suffering in the body gets strong enough, we may have the motivation to move because then there's the body that wants to move. Yeah, Then there's a motivation. But of course, that's not enough. That also becomes very empty and very boring and, and um, keeps that identification still alive even if I every day I take my body for a walk and every day I even cook cook for my body a good meal and I manage to do that and, and, and buy, buy groceries and I manage to do that but of course that's not enough for to have uh, what, what the ego would deem to be a and what you think then when when you're um, thinking through the ego it, it's not enough to say oh I have a good life I'm happy there's joy in my life. If that's all that if that's all that you're motivated to do. You don't feel like seeing anyone, you don't, you know, none of that.
So you're still in that place. And it is the resistance of that place. It is staying in the ego. And staying in, that's what keeps that identity alive that says, I'm a loser. I'm a failure. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm a waste of, 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 a, of a human being or something, you know? Because, because I'm, I'm, there's nothing, there's just nothing there, you know? And I'm just basically keeping the body alive. But I'm not creating a life for myself. I don't have a life. I don't have a social life, you know, I'm not creating anything. And, and um, that can be, you know, when, when that, when that understanding, when, when the understanding then comes through the filter of the egoic mind, that's, that's then painful. And that's why I'm sharing this. I've never shared this before and I didn't at all think that this is how it would turn out today, that this is how it would come through. <laughs> Because I'm, this is something that I'm just waking up to right now. I'm just learning. Learning? It's not learning. I'm just realizing this right now. Yeah. So when in reality what is happening is a shift from operating through the egoic mind to releasing that, waking up, being liberated from that spell, from that prison of mind, which you weren't aware of, that it was a prison in the mind. It felt like a prison in your surroundings. It felt so stuck. because we're stuck in the ego and as we understand the ego and it's in our, our egoic conditioning and how that works then we can recognize it so when the voice comes when that perception that mental perception of our circumstances and how we are showing up comes and we can recognize oh, where that's coming from. Is that the truth? Is that the truth of this situation and of who I am and how I'm showing up? Is that the truth? I'm lazy. I'm a vegetable. I could do better. I'm, I'm missing out on, on this wonderful, amazing ascension. I'm missing out on life. I'm going to die sad. I'm just doing time until my death. And then, and then maybe after, after I die, maybe I'll realize what I did wrong and then I'll have to come back and do it again. <laughs> All these thought patterns that have frequency, they have vibration, they have, those are waves. And those waves are in resistance to the truth. They are in resistance because the, the egoic mind is a is a reverse matrix, an inverted reverse matrix program. It's based on fear, it's based on separation, so it's based on the on a lie and and um, the spin is in the opposite direction. So it's always gonna cause friction and dissonance. Those waves. However, and this is what heart coherence is. However, um, when they come into contact with the heart field, and the heart is open enough then they embed perfectly. What they do is then they transform and they flip their spin back to the original spin and they're in harmony. They, 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 they don't bump, they, there's no friction, they're in harmony with everything. And the friction is where the heart is closed, where, where the heart 
you know, is where the consciousness and thereby the soul asleep to itself, where the consciousness is still coming through the egoic mind, it cannot flow back through the heart. And that's what we call healing. So opening the heart, which is an expansion of consciousness to the truth of who we are, waking up to the programming of ourselves and the conditioning of ourselves. Then those dissonant vibrations within our field, within our mind, become realigned, they become reharmonized. And the heart opens up a little bit more. And that is so, that is also the deep, 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 deep wisdom that um, all I can do is do my best in the moment what shows up. And there's, and I cannot do. That's just a perception through the egoic mind. I cannot do but my best in every moment. And that's, that's at the moment where I'm saying this, this is not embodied yet for me. I'm starting, you know, I'm, I know this on a mental level, but I also know that I, um, I'm not living it fully yet. There are parts of me that still cannot believe that, that still are in that, <clears throat> prism that still think I could have done better and I should have done better and I should have done different you know those the guilt and the regrets and I know that there is no way on the level of the of my history of, of the story that I've experienced through my identified self that forgiveness could ever happen. I always feel bad from that perspective and in that memory about certain things that happened, about what I did. And I know that the only way to reconcile that so that this, this really hard, sad, unbearable sometimes feeling finally gets reconciled. The only way that can happen is through the, through the dissolution of that character, of, of, of my identification. And with the recognition of... Um, of my soul self, you know, and then uh, uh, the recognition of my soul self and with the awakening to the level of consciousness where all of that is embedded, where all of that what happened is no longer resisted and no longer judged as something terrible at the same time as it doesn't push away that it was very painful. It, it, it acknowledges fully how painful it was at the same time as it can as, as from that broader perspective of, of your true being where, where you are woke where you woke up to that you woke up to there is a, there is a, a knowing and a, and a feeling and a knowing that is embodied because it also remembers the much greater self that was there before you came into this vessel, this physical vessel. And it doesn't even have to be on a mental level that you remember all the planning and the blueprints and the, and the contracts and, and, and what you wanted to experience in order to um, have this and this experience, do this and this mission, play this and this role in the whole collective uh, playground. Um, it doesn't even have to be necessarily that, that you become aware of this, although that definitely 
can happen and I, I believe also that if that's what you want at some point you you can and you will um, know that it's available um, but there you you can then be at peace with it because you can see the whole picture and even without seeing the whole picture at peace with it because here's the thing because when this is this is this is really it when we have a dream and in that dream we have a certain experience and oftentimes and this is the dream I'm, I'm talking about now it's a dream where we did things that we would normally never do completely out of character we did things that we would never want to do um, we said things we would never want to say and yet in those dreams we did them we said them we acted in certain ways and then we, when we wake up it's like we don't feel guilty yeah that's the difference we don't feel guilty um which it's just like wow that we, we marvel at the dream we're like wow what was what kind of a dream was that or huh that was an interesting dream that was an interesting experience now you can say well the dream didn't really happen the dream didn't really happen but what what we experience you know in our lives that really happened okay so it's a par it's a parable this is also a dream every every reality is a, is a dream reality on a level of in a different dimension on a level of perception and consciousness in the mind of God and the form of God is all forms so ultimately ultimately and this at this moment is only mental but that's how it starts that and that's good to know <laughs> it's good to know that this is the truth because that means that eventually I will uh, you know I will get to that place so ultimately to judge yourself is also to judge God And it is this awakening to, to, to a consciousness that is so aware of itself as soul, as, as a being that is never dying, you know, that, 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 that is one with, with all creation. There is no sense of separation, even though, yes, okay, so the soul itself, does it have a does it have it has an energy body yes and it has an energy signature but it is connected energetically to all other souls all other beings and that's where telepathy comes from because wherever the soul focuses on when um, telepathy is what you focus on you know you know it intimately but you will also only download and receive the download that which is uh, pertinent to you at, at that moment so you will feel no longer like that character that did this thing it will feel like a bad dream it will feel like a bad dream and you will no longer have that sense why did I do that or why didn't I do this Um, because when you wake up from a dream, you know in the mornings, you know when you're lying in bed, you know exactly there's no way you could have, that's how the dream went, there's no way you could have done it any other way. That's how the egoic mind is also fed and kept alive. <sighs> yeah.
Yeah, that's why it's very, very good to, when this is coming through, to put it into words, to get really clear about it, to become very aware about it. Because that is what this understanding is for, is to become aware of um, the what is motivating us, what is inspiring us, what is what is making us do what, what we do, what are we thinking, what are we entertaining, what kind of uh, movie is going on in our mind, to become aware of this. Um, and becoming aware of what is going on within us and making us do what we do is becoming aware of the egoic mind program and that is its undoing. Okay.